Hello and welcome back to the Rock Road Academy. I'm your host, David Flanagan, also known as Rock Road Across the Internet. Today, we are taking a look at an open source, painless, self-hosted Git solution called Giti. Now, as always, there are important rules. If I suddenly come underwater, tell me early. Do not wait till the end of the stream. All right. So give me a thumbs up in the chat. Make sure that I sound all right. And then today's session will just be a whole lot better. All right, let's pop over here. I am joined by the project lead and founder of Gati, Matty. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, uh, it's going really well. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, it is, you know, always the highlight of my week when I get to sit down and take a look at a really cool open source project. So uh, today it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Can you please just give us a little bit of an introduction to who you are, please? Of course. Uh, I'm Maddie, also known as uh, Tech or Technologic in the GitE community and a broader open source uh, community as well. Um, and I joined uh, GitE. I was looking at my commit history just the other day, and I joined in uh, 2017. The project uh, started in uh, late 2016. And uh, we're uh, just making a way for developers to be able to host their own source code uh, so they don't have to uh, rely on a centralized service or uh, be able to uh, self-host on something as small as a Raspberry Pi. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, it's awkward timing, but the building manager was chapping my door right there. And I've also got Russell in the chat telling me that the sound is okay, but not amazing. Uh, thanks, Russell. That uh, That's really helpful. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pop a cable very, very quickly. Honestly, audio is the worst thing. I have nothing but a hard time trying to get it right. Russell, let me know if that is any better. Okay, cool. So uh, thank you for introducing yourself and telling us a little bit uh, about Gati. Um, it's, I think it's really cool that we have choice when it comes to hosting our own Git. It's something that I've, you know, I've done a few times. Um, and it's just nice to be able to, I, I'm just like a complete magpie when it comes to this stuff. Like whenever there's a cool open source project, I just feel the need to like just go and play with it. Uh, and Gatia has been on that list for a while and I haven't actually got around to it. So today we're going to have a bit of a authentic look at me, just kind of kick the tires on it and get started. Um, I also love that you said that it runs on a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, you know, I think we're in a really cool age of technology where we all have these tiny little computers sitting well mines are mostly in drawers but i hope other people's aren't all sitting in drawers but you know we do have the ability to you know stick in a little bit of power in these things cell tape them onto the wall and run really cool stuff in our homes you know like gati and home assistant and all these other things so it's cool that that is a kind of you know not a focus but like it, it's something that the gati community has embraced and adopted all right awesome so you said that the Gati project's been around since 2016 and you joined in 2017. I thought you were the founder, so I made a mistake there. So oh, I, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm the project owner and uh, I'm a project owner and lead. Uh, so we have uh, yearly elections and I've been uh, uh, voted for to uh, be the steward of the project. Uh, one of the three uh, owners uh, for the past couple of years. Um, it's... Uh, it was a project started by uh, Lani Zhao, um, also known as uh, Lani on GitHub. And uh, so we've been uh, working together for uh, quite some time now. Cool. Well, what are some of the, like, is, is there a mission statement with Gati? Is there like something yeah, that you're just um, driving forward to and push into? Like you mentioned governance and elections and stuff like that. I mean, this sounds like a very mature, yeah project. So there must be some sort of mission statement in, involved here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with uh, close to 32,000 stars, we're one of the top 500 projects on GitHub or something. Uh, and we're uh, moving towards being able to actually self-host ourselves. We have the infrastructure set up. It's just uh, take some time to extract tens of thousands of issues and pull requests from the GitHub ecosystem. And so our mission statement is really just uh, giving uh, control back to developers to be able to um, host their code wherever they want. And um, yeah, <laughs> oh. 
That's a good mission statement. I don't um, think it, you, I don't think you need much more than that. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I have uh, like I have I get to running locally just on my NAS, and uh, I have it mirroring thousands of repositories just because um, rep repositories come and go, and just so that I have that archive. So then, if I'm working on something, there's that Node.js package from 2015 that disappeared or whatever, and it's there and uh, all of my projects still uh, run as expected. Awesome. Well, we're going to dive into the hands-on component in just a second, or maybe a, a minute or two, but I want to ask you just a, a couple more questions. So on the thumbnail for this session and on the Gitty website, it says like a painless self-hosting Git solution. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, no, I'm so just curious hopefully, what was it? Uh, yeah, sorry, go for it. <laughs> uh, that's um, I'm I'm not going to tempt the demo gods today, but uh, that is uh, really what we strive for. That uh, we provide options for uh, any technical skill level, whether uh, you're a beginner or you've uh, been writing Linux kernels, uh, the Linux kernel for I guess 31 years now. That you can set it up and it'll run. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it's, it's bold and I like that, but I have, a, I do have a natural talent for breaking things. So I really hope that I don't break anything today, but I, I'm sure I won't. All right. Uh, last question, just because I think I've said this publicly on Twitter before, and like, I feel like get is the version control system that we're stuck with, but not necessarily the one we want. And I was curious, what are your thoughts on get? I mean, you must be quite, you, you must work with get literally day in and day out. So, I mean, are, do you happy with it? Do you see there's been an evolution? Uh, will we still be using Git in five or ten years time? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Yeah, I've I definitely work with Git every day, um, and it, it's um, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, I love it. Uh, but there's uh, getting down into like the depths of things of being able to write your own forge. There's uh, some nuances that you have to be aware of. Um, and I also understand that the user experience isn't necessarily the best from command line. And so that's one of the problems that we're trying to solve with Git is being able to, if you don't use the command line at all, that's fine. You can do everything in the web editor. And we have the full uh, Monaco um, editor in uh, the browser. Nice. And uh, yeah, but I also like uh, I'm I love uh, source control of all kinds. Uh, I, I I I package Mercurial for Nix OS, and I just sent a patch to Alpine just yesterday for the update to Mercurial. And so I think, yeah, no, it's just <laughs> it's so fascinating uh, source control because and how uh, different source control. Uh, uh, systems uh, approach uh, different things, even uh, Mercur Mercurial uh, and uh, Git have uh, their differences and uh, some people like to uh, compare them directly, but uh, just even how things are stored, uh, like Git has their pack system and Mercurial does as well. And yeah, uh, yeah and I, I grew up with CVS and Subversion and so, um, you know, Git, and Curial are a, brush, a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I do not miss either of those two tools. Um, I mean, Subversion felt like such a breath of fresh air back in the day when we adopted it and switched it. But, uh, you know, that centralized model, like it was just very painful, pushing and locking files and all. Uh, yeah, never again, hopefully. Um, and I, I actually, you know, I, I, I do really like get my only major gripe with it is the identity model and it's literally just a text email address and that's it i mean obviously we can sign stuff now and that's very cool but you still need that email address um i went through a phase of just changing my email address to like bell at microsoft.com and pushing stuff to github and like it, nothing stops you right because why cool um, and lastly on that i experiment with a lot of prototype version control systems that are coming out. There's lots of them out there, and some really cool Rust-based ones that I'll try and include the links to at the end. But then every time I play with it for more than 10 minutes, I'm like, I'm just wasting time now because Git is 
ubiquitous, right? Like it's just literally everywhere. I don't think we can get away from it now. So, um, all right, that's enough about my preferences. I think we should dive into the hands-on component and uh, let's get Gatti running on some on some metal. Excellent. Let's do this. Uh, all right, I have my screen shared, and uh, Russell, if you swear again in the chat, I'm going to ban you. Visual source safe. Come on. Um, may as well say perforce. Or is it preforce or perforce? I can never remember. But anyway. Okay, we have the Gatti website. So if you want to check out anything that we're doing today, I can remember how to zoom, you can go to gatti.io. Uh, I mean, it looks familiar right off the bat, and I'm guessing that's an intentional decision by the team to make it familiar to developers. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, reminiscent of uh, GitHub. And that's just um, the user experience is familiar with one system. And so just transitioning over to ours is um, they know where to expect things and uh, they understand the concepts without having to relearn something entirely. Cool. Uh, if I click on try, this is cool. Oh, this is a test instance. I guess I want to go to docs for today, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. We have a whole bunch of installation options here. Uh, do you have a preference? Uh, so probably just uh, from uh, binary is uh, likely that uh, is one of the most common uh, ways uh, just download the binary from our uh, release site and yeah. At the ground running. Well, before I, I do that then, you know, Gati is written in Go, right? Is that right? That's right, yeah. Right. And then we have uh, our presentation layer is a combination of uh, some Node.js packages and a few CSS frameworks. Okay, cool. Awesome. Because I haven't, I have tried to install, you know, GitLab is obviously an open source Git solutions as well. Um, but that was the most painful week of my life, I think, trying to, because it's multiple services, but really they're distributed as like one big massive thing. And yeah, uh, I lost some sleep that yeah. week for sure. That's interesting uh, that you say that because that's actually how I came to uh, Gitti as well is <laughs> um, I was responsible for managing GitLab and uh, no shade to them because uh, they've done wonderful things with their installer. It's just uh, the omnibus now, but um at that time it was i was looking for alternatives and uh yeah i found gt and my life has changed for the better since yeah i, I love that you mentioned the omnibus because back in the day when i, I adopted kubernetes really early um, and one of the first things i tried to deploy to it was our own GitLab instance for the organization i was working for at the time and the omnibus helm chart that just deployed everything and i was like uh how do i like upgrade one component and the answer was just like no you don't and i'm like all right uh so this thing shipping postgres and redis and 14 ruby applications and i was just yeah um i threw the toys out the pram and just walked away but we're not going to have that problem today so what have i prepared in advance well nothing is always the answer we have a oh my shells kicked me off all right Hopefully that's the same IP address. Nice. Uh, we have a uh, Equinix metal bare metal machine. We've got some cores. We've got some RAM. I haven't done anything to this. Uh, this is a Ubuntu box. It's a vanilla Ubuntu install. There's nothing special done here in advance. So we're going to go through the process of installing a T on this machine. And I'm really hoping that Matt is not going to turn around and go, oh, Ubuntu, sorry, not today. Ubuntu is going to be OK, right? <laughs> Uh, it's going to be definitely great. And uh, just as a disclaimer from our side, Equinix Metal is a sponsor of the project. Oh, are they? Um, but oh, nice. uh, we uh, recommend them otherwise, uh, even if they didn't sponsor us. <laughs> I, I actually used to work for Equinix Metal, so I do have access to the machines. Um, and I use them for everything because they're just they're fantastic. Why spin up a VM with one core and 512 mega RAM when you can just spin up a monster machine and get so much more done? Um, exactly yeah okay so yeah i didn't know that but that's very cool that they sponsored the project all right let's work through this then so we're going to download the right file this is uh amd64 uh 
This is going to be really easy, isn't it? I mean, I'm assuming I could probably just run Gatia help. Yeah, there we go. So this is one of the really special things about Go as well. Um, and I'm not a daily Go developer. I do typically prefer to write things in Rust, but the static compilation of Go binaries and the ability to shift them everywhere is very, very nice, I've got to say. So, uh, I mean, is that as done? Did I just run Gatina? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you could, uh, but uh, it's recommended to use a separate Unix user just because it, um, uh, if you're running with OpenSSHD, it will take over your authorized key files. Uh, so there's a bunch of copy and paste things that you can do to create the uh, new uh, Git user. And then also just general, if you're pushing and pulling via SSH, you don't want root at uh, gitty.com you want to get at gitty.com yeah that makes a lot of sense um i guess what i'm curious about right now is that you mentioned that there's gitty uh, which is a server it's written in go you have a front end which has other components i'm assuming there's a database that needs to be configured or used in some capacity so like does this all ship in a single binary yeah so um uh, everything's uh, pre-compiled, so you can use uh, SQLite. Um, if you have uh, a database already, or if you want to configure a database as well, uh, you can do that. MySQL, Postgres, um, MS SQL, uh, if you're a Windows shop. Um, but if you're uh, just a lone developer, SQLite is, uh, will meet your needs more than enough. Yeah, I'm, I try to encourage people to use SQLite a lot more, especially with what Ben Johnson's doing now at fly.io with uh, Lightstream and the ability to kind of like hook into the right ahead log and write it to blob storage. It's just absolutely ridiculous what you can do now with SQLite. Um, I, I actually find myself struggling to reach for Postgres anymore, which was always my default. Okay. Uh, well, this is really cool. Um, single binary stuff makes me happy, especially from an operational point of view. Uh, what about other deployment models? Uh, I didn't look at the yeah. website here, but if I want to run this in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, uh, and we have a Helm chart exactly for that. So you can uh, install the Helm chart um, and it comes with uh, optional dependencies, the uh, Bitnami uh, database uh, charts. If you uh, want to uh, use them to spin up a database, uh, but again, it's optional. So if you already have a database cluster set up, you can point to that, or uh, if you, uh, we don't recommend running with SQLite on Kubernetes just because uh, likely you're uh, mounting the files from either NFS or uh, whatnot. So the latency there would be uh, something to worry about, but you know, it's possible. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna run through your recommended server configuration then. Um, I don't even know if get ships by default. It does. Okay, nice. Uh, and next we're going to add the get user. Like you said, we don't want to be doing root at. So let's grab this. Which is just setting up bash and disabling the password. And I'm assuming all the repositories within the Gatia instance, Gatia inst <laughs> instance, uh, live in home get. They're just going to be thrown in there. Is that right? That's exactly. Um, actually, uh, in the next uh, set of commands, you'll see uh, that it's uh, going to store it all in uh, verilib uh, gitty. All right, okay. All right, let's do that. And then we chim on some stuff. And we don't have any feather yet, right? Oh, yes. Uh, so if you, um, the installer uh, will auto create it for you. Um, uh, so when you uh, set up Gitty the first time, um, installer will be presented to you, or you can uh, hand create the uh, configuration file yourself. Okay. I haven't seen any mention of an installer yet. Did I skip a step? Uh, no. <laughs> so that's uh, that's good to know uh, to include that. All right. Let's just uh, skip over that just now. So... Then, yeah, I really need to stop skimming stuff and read things properly. Do I need to run Gatee generate secret? 
Uh, so that will, uh, if you're uh, manually generating the configuration file, then you'll need to, but otherwise the installer will create that for you. All righty. So let's set the work there. Copy this to Ben. And now we get to decide how to manage this. So this is just to run it, but I, we can use a Linux server. So let's do it the nice way. I like it when software gives me a systemd unit file. It makes me very happy. So, service. Oh, yeah, I'll fix that. So this is set up with all the defaults that we've just worked on, which is the user get, yep, and the group. We didn't add a group get, did we? So I'll need to add that. Uh, working directory looks okay. And we don't need a database dependency. So I think this is fine, except for my name, because I can't type service daemon reload. OK, um, what do you think? Uh, should I add that group, or do you think we'll be OK? Um, probably best to add that group, actually. Um, we have uh, one of our maintainers, John, in the chat, and uh, he's taking notes. Uh, group add get. Oh. Oh, I guess uh, the <laughs> add user would have created it. Oh, fantastic. Did it have a flag on it? Oh, it did. OK, dash dash group. OK. Uh, fantastic. See, awesome. Uh, so we can then run the enable, and I'm assuming There we go. All right. I don't need your docs anymore. So let's grab the IP address, which I don't remember. So I'll grab from here. And uh, it doesn't run on port 80. So. Yeah, it's not a, a privileged uh, process. And so it can't listen to anything below um, uh, 1084, or sorry, uh, 1024. Um, by default, uh, the port is 3000. Cool. Uh, so we've got it running with ease. I mean, let's just call it ease because all I just was done a little bit, we're sticking a directory and had a unit file. So this is pretty sweet. Now, I've got a web interface to configure this, but I'm assuming this is just for ease of use, right? This is part of your painless mission. Um, if I wanted to, I could write that in a file and probably skip this step altogether. Is that? Exactly. Uh, in our uh, Docker file, we have um, a series of uh, environment variables that will actually I'll take those environment variables and generate the uh, app config based on that. And similarly, in our Helm chart, we have uh, an init script uh, that will do something similar. So you can just define it all in your values.yaml. Cool. Uh, let me skim this. Uh, I'm not going to configure email. Is that OK? <laughs> yeah, just, that yeah. will only be needed if for like password resets or uh, to get notified of like new pull requests. Uh, what if the that's because we didn't change the permissions because it didn't exist. But if I just do uh, app.ini change owner. Uh, oh, and uh, the install page will also uh, create. Uh, you can create an administrator user uh, through here, uh, or you can also create it uh, via the um, uh, oh, just okay. the first user that will register. Oh, oh dear. Uh, see if it's still running. Okay, it's running. Uh, it's looks all right. In the log book, show anything. Yeah. I think it just should did it restart when I did the install. Uh, yeah, but the listener should be uh, still going. Uh, all right, let's try a little bit of encouragement.
Oh, wait. Has Rita right to make oh, a local host? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> because um, it will redirect you to the root URL. Uh, and by default, it's local host. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... So this will be a warning saying uh, there's a difference. It is uh, actually warning computer. me. See, if I pay attention to the error messages, I'd have less problems. So. Uh, I'm assuming that was part of that form that I very quickly just filled in Rockwood Academy and disappeared. So that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you just uh, change uh, finder and place localhost all over to the IP, uh, then so I'm there. You go using that's an IP everything. right now, right? But I'm assuming for most people they're going to want some sort of uh, DNS entry here. Does exactly. Gati? do the Let's Encrypt dance for us, or do we handle that externally? Uh, we can uh, do the Let's Encrypt uh, ourselves, um, although uh, you would need to um, set the binary, uh, some uh, the privileged Linux permissions to be able to listen on port 80 and 443. Um, but, uh, you know, you could run something like Caddy in front and other wonderful Go projects. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nginx, Apache, uh, any a proxy even. What does your setup look like for your own GT instances? Uh, so we uh, run, uh, we provide the privileged uh, port access uh, right. just because it's, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Let's Encrypt works great. We actually also use the Caddy uh, library for working with Let's Encrypt. And I'm assuming by privileged, what you mean is modifying this unit file. Yeah, system. And add in the net, cap net raw or That's cap net exactly, yeah. service uh, capability, right? Yeah. I think that's the one. Cat. Yeah, that's the one for getting port 80. Yeah, um, we have it documented somewhere in our uh, documentation. So if you search for it uh, in our docs as well, it should be somewhere there. Uh, I don't know what to search for. 80. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try 80. All right, so, yep, there's Acme, Let's Encrypt Support. Use a nice name. Uh, or you can do, okay, so you've documented the proxies as well. Okay. Uh, I don't see the privileged guide, but maybe it's in there somewhere. Not a big deal for today. So let's jump back. And now our error has gone. So this is the fresh GT instance then, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, you can uh, create your first account and that will become the administrative uh, user. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, instance isn't going to live long, so I don't mind everybody seeing what that password is for the, for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> These are all very trustworthy, I hope. Uh, cool. So do we get like a site admin? That's what I was going to say. Like the ability to tweak and configure things within the GT instance. So. Uh, so most of the configuration is done via the app config, uh, just so that you can uh, script uh, deployments. Uh, but there's uh, maintenance operations task, as you can see right here, to uh, clean up things and uh, test con your configuration. Mm -hmm. Does GT have LFS support? It does. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we recently had a major release uh, within the past month where we also added support for uh, packages of all sorts. So uh, Python uh, packages, Ruby gems, uh, Docker containers, Helm charts, uh, so many things. And yeah, so we're uh, very excited about that uh, functionality specifically. 
Okay. I'm just clicking buttons now. I hope that's all right. Yeah, of course. Template label. What license does Gatti? Uh, we're licensed uh, MIT. Yeah, I use MIT for just pretty much everything now. Uh, okay. So I've created a Git repository. In fact, I did a few things there while we were kind of chatting. Uh, I created an organization, uh, which I guess might come up under Explore. Yeah. Uh, and I could create something here, which is cool. I created at my own repository and we got a license and a readme. So I guess what we want to do is get to the step where I can actually pull this down. Um, so I'm assuming if I, I could just add my SSH key to my settings. Oh, you support signing commits too with GPG. Uh, yeah, signing commits with GPG, uh, as well as um, in January, we introduced uh, signing commits with your SSH key. Nice. I actually used, I have one password now configured with both my, with my SSH keys, which I can use for signing. Although I have been exploring uh, cosign from the, the chain guard folks. I don't know if you've been talking to them about verifying their signatures, but those are pretty cool as well because they use OIDC against uh, Google, etc. cetera. So, uh, all right. Uh, one password was trying to be nice there and now it's changed its mind. Uh, yeah, we'll create a new one. Cool. All right, let's do the test. Are you feeling confident? I, I am, yes. <laughs> uh, all right, so we are doing a git clone from our instance. Dun, dun, dun. Well, let's ask for my key, so it's going to work. Hey, there we go. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you the painless. I can't take that away from the project. Like, I mean, we, we've done a lot there in relatively no time or effort whatsoever. And already I'm able to clone down our repository and start working on it. So that's pretty sweet. Very cool. Uh, Moz asked in the chat, is Gatti written in Go? Yeah, you joined a little bit late, but we did cover it is written in Go, but there is the front end, which has, uh, I think you said some React stuff going on there. Uh, uh, Vue.js. Vue.js, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, we use uh, Fomantic uh, CSS framework, which is a fork of semantic CSS. Uh, John is saying, don't forget to change to the dark theme. Uh, all right. Uh, Russell agreeing that was pretty easy. Cool. Uh, we have a question from Moz. Uh, does Gatti support token-based authentication instead of passwords? Uh, we do. And in fact, uh, we're working towards uh, slowly deprecating um, utilizing your user's password uh, to uh, in your clone actions or API calls. There's a token-based API. Uh, there's uh, app tokens available currently. Um, it, is all, it is possible to use your user's password, uh, but not recommended. And eventually, it'll be going away uh, just because you shouldn't be using your password just everywhere. Yeah, well, I do see the option here to use WebAuthn, which is awesome. But because we're on local, uh, we're not on local host, but it's uh, uh, specifically um, oh, so in it's HTLS. It's HTTPS, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that uh, error should get updated as well. But you also support two-factor authentication, and there's OpenID as well, so you can do a delegation to, I guess, to Google, etc. Yeah, so we have uh, open ID uh, that you can log in as, uh, but as an administrator, you're also able to set up uh, other authentication sources. So if you want to have users log in with their GitHub account, their GitLab account, their Twitter, um, 
we have a whole bunch. I think you can even log in with uh, Discord is one of the ones that was the last ones that I added. Cool. All right, I'm going to just kind of stop clicking on buttons. Is there anything that you think would be interesting to take a look at uh, from the Gatti instance that we set up? Yeah, uh, so you showed how to uh, create a new repository, but one of uh, one of the things that we're uh, very excited about is our migration capabilities. Uh, so rather than uh, if you want to migrate away from GitHub or uh, something, uh, you can create a new migration, throw in your Git URL, and it will do the Git clone itself. So you don't need to do that step. Uh, but then you can also, um, if you want to get advanced, you can also throw in uh, your a GitHub app token, and it will actually clone over issues from that repository as well, and pull requests and um, uh, so you can fully set up. Um, so that's uh, pull mirrors, uh, but then we also have push mirrors. So you can work with your repository locally with your local Gitty instance, and then you can have it uh, pushed to various remotes uh, itself. Ah. All right, will we test this? Yeah, uh, pop in any uh, Git repository So this is the meta support. So this just means, uh, I guess I would have to provide the access token for that, or do I always have to provide an access token? Uh, so if you're mirroring it, uh, it will just do a uh, git clone. You'll need to provide the access co token if it's a private repository. Um, however, if you're going to migrate labels, pull requests, milestones, you'll need to provide auth because uh, just Otherwise, the experience of uh, getting rate limited for like 50 queries from the GitHub API is not pleasant and it will take a week to migrate any. There you go. Holy shit. That was fast. And it pulls in the project description as well, um, full history. And if you I want, don't mind. Yeah. And if, yeah. Uh, so in terms of CI integration right now, uh, there's a question in chat from Rio. Um, we uh, have integration with uh, a bunch of different uh, CI providers, uh, Jenkins, Drone, Woodpecker, uh, to name a few. Uh, the project itself, we use uh, Drone uh, uh, primarily just because um, in the beginning of our project, we had a lot of overlap between contributors to Drone as well as uh, Getty. Um, uh, however, now uh, uh, Woodpecker is a fork of Drone, and that's where mainly the Getty contributors are at now. Okay. Um, but it can report uh, statuses uh, back to commit. So just like on GitHub, you can see the uh, check mark if your build on a specific commit was successful in pull request you can see uh, again uh, your various different external uh, ci providers work out uh, you can do branch protection uh, based on uh, ci status uh, so don't merge that pull request if the tests fail very cool uh, i get an rss feed as well from I guess if I start pushing to this, does that publish new things to the feed? That will, yeah. So it's not um, every commit, <clears throat> excuse me. It's uh, that's uh, specifically for releases. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, let's cut a release. I've been meaning to do 1.0 for like the last nine months. So why, why not do it here? Oh, zero point ten. Uh... So let's make sure my assumptions are correct in that case. For the RSS feed. <laughs> yeah, and if I do stay, I'm, I'm just going to test it. So, um, okay, let me throw a, a 
question out then. There, there's a lot of similarities here between Gatti and GitHub, and we discussed that at the start about how it's supposed to be familiar so that people, you know, they're not discouraged or intimidated or anything like that. Would you say Gatti has pretty good parity with what GitHub offers? Because it, it looks and feels like it. I, I mean, I haven't visually seen anything that isn't on Gatti here. Yeah, so um, in our docs, we have a whole long comparison document uh, that lists out the differences between uh, Gitty, Gogs, uh, GitLab, and uh, GitHub. And uh, for the most part, uh, there's a lot of uh, overlap. Um, and one of our actually, uh, I mentioned SSH signing. Uh, we had that in January, but uh, GitHub just released that fairly recently. So in uh, some cases we're uh, moving faster. Um, we're not a multi-billion dollar company, so but, <laughs> you know we still have some agility. Well, who who prioritizes the work then? I mean, with an open source project, this is a very common problem, right? Is that everybody wants to work on the thing that's most important to them, and it can be difficult to find direction. But I'm assuming, again, going back to what you said at the start about there being like governance and such, you must be quite a well-oiled machine to a certain point. I am assuming you know what that roadmap looks like. Yeah, um, as we're all volunteers right now, um, it is working on. Uh, what uh, we all want to work on. Um, although uh, there's uh, maintainers and uh, core contributors, we all uh, also contribute uh, like uh, minor refactors for stability enhancements, um, as well as uh, like, uh, like bug fixes and whatnot. So uh, it's a nice mix of uh, features as well as uh, stability uh, resolutions. Um, a question from chat. Uh, Gitty does uh, somewhat support clustering. Um, uh, we previously on Gitty.com, we were running uh, Gitty in a multi-cluster uh, uh, setup or a multi-node setup. Um, although right now, um, there's instances of Gitty with tens of thousands of users running on a single machine. So the need for high availability is, um, <laughs> like you'll need to, uh, question, uh, like, like whether or not you do actually need it. Well, yeah, whether um, they want it for scale or whether they want it for redundant yeah. and if it's for scale. Yeah. You probably don't need to. I mean, we have these numbers at the bottom, which I keep, they catch my eye every time I load a new page, but the, yeah. they've never been more than a few milliseconds for any of these pages. Yeah. And I know this is an empty instance, but, you know, is that yeah. when you get to the larger instances, I'm assuming these, I'm hoping these numbers still stay pretty small. Uh, they definitely do. And um, one of our uh, other owners, uh, Zeri Path, he's put in a ton of effort into keeping. Uh, that performant of being able to browse, like even the Linux kernel with all of its commits, just keeping it speedy, um, uh, just keeping it that low. And just for uh, sake of comparison, uh, Gitty.com, uh, we have, I think, something like 30,000 uh, registered users um, and even more repositories. And we have four gigs of RAM on that server. <laughs> Now, uh, our storage is rather significant. We have, I think it's uh, a terabyte of storage uh, right now reserved, and uh, we can scale that up because we're on a cloud provider. Uh, just click and drag the uh, storage bar for our NFS server. But, you know, like I said at the beginning, our we really aim to have uh, just as little resources as possible uh, used. Nice. Uh, well, while you were talking about cluster and high availability, I was playing with your project feature and just I <laughs> threw on some boards. I like that I can color them, got an issue. I mean, it, this is really cool. I mean, I'm just dragging stuff about now, but I like it. I'm going to close this now. Let's just do a fix it. There we go. Uh, Ta-da. 
All right, so we oh we were going to test your release RSS. That's what it was. Hey, look at that. All right, so we get issues. Uh, my release as well. Cool. There okay, we so uh, yeah, these are actions that have taken place in the repository, not just releases. Uh, so same thing that happens in your um, your explore feed on the home page. It will show that you've created issues, closed uh, issues. Uh, so we'll, this is the information that will show up in the RSS feed, except it will be filtered per that cool. uh, specific repository. All right. Nice. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen RSS feeds from another Git provider, but I mean, I still use RSS daily. Like for everything, yeah. for all my news and stuff like that. Like, why would I not want to yeah. subscribe to like the most important projects and get updates? So. Exactly. Uh, so GitHub uh, does have uh, RSS feeds. Um, if I can uh, promote another project, <laughs> <laughs> um, they just uh, don't have uh, the it visible. Uh, but if you go view source, you can view their atom links. Ah, I had no idea. But that was one of the first things I noticed when I was on this thing it was like, oh, look, I've got this. So it's amazing how you just stick an icon on something and it actually becomes a whole lot more visible to people. So. Okay, uh, we've kind of covered that Gati has a level of parity with GitHub. It's got a couple of extra features. We've seen the migration support there. Is there anything else that's different in Gati that you want to highlight as part of our, our session? Um. Hmm. Uh, nothing. <laughs> I think. I think we've uh, covered everything I wanted to uh, focus on today. Um, awesome. All right. Well, I'm uh, going to ask you a question then. So yeah, definitely, I have a lot of repositories um, on GitHub, and yeah, 306. Now, of course, most of them are crappy one-time forks and stuff like that, but but they they add up. And I've always wanted to be able to group some together. And GitLab does offer like grouping support. Is that something that you've discussed at Gati? And is that something that you think you would implement? Yeah, so uh, there is a ticket open for subgroups. Uh, but just like with GitHub, uh, we have uh, labels. Uh, you can also filter based on labels to be able to categorize. Um, say if you're working for a company and you have your infrastructures, code repositories, and then you have your application code, you can take stuff as IAC and filter based on that, or you can uh, take stuff as application code and filter based on that for your specific um, uh, uh, team uh, repositories. Uh, John is in the chat mentioning a visual swagger UI. Yeah. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there should be a link to the API. Uh, and that's what uh, John's talking about. Uh, so we have uh, oh. an API. And uh, so this is actually uh, programmatically generated uh, from our API endpoints. And so uh, you can uh, see all of the endpoints that are available. You can uh, test the endpoints. And we also have um, a, a command line tool that will work with the API as well called uh, T. Uh, so if you don't want to use the web interface, you can use the CLI and create pull requests, browse issues. All right, I didn't, I didn't mean to break stuff intentionally that time. Ah, oh, cool. So you just can use it straight from in the Swagger UI. Very cool. And you mentioned a command line application as well? Yeah. Uh, so uh, gitty.com slash gitty slash t. Um, and you can install it. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you can use our homebrew tab. Um, t the letter or t the? I, oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, gitty.com, rather. Uh, uh, 
Ah. There we go. And so is this a, a nice... public instance that's available to anyone? Uh, it is public. Uh, the primary focus of it is to uh, the uh, for the purpose of uh, building Gitty, uh, although there are non Gitty related uh, repositories on there. Uh, but uh, generally, we recommend uh, right now uh, codebird.org. Uh, They're a uh, Gitty instance uh, primarily focused on uh, free and open source software. Um, and a disclaimer I'm on the presidium of that organization. So this is a green tick. Uh, oh yeah, we've got checks here. Yeah. So what's so, this hooked up to? Uh, so this is hooked up to our drone instance. And uh, so you can see all of the tests that it runs. And uh, so yeah, this is a perfect example of external CI. I'll zoom in a bit. Yeah, nice. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. Awesome. Uh, I should have came here earlier. I'm seeing loads of cool things now. So is that you also support issue templates as well. Yeah, uh, issue templates. Um, uh, you can, uh, we just merged um, the custom issue forms. Like on GitHub, you can say, please fill out the version number of, the, uh, of what you're using and having it required so that uh, users don't just uh, skip optional elements in, or required elements in the form. You can say, fill out the version number and other interesting things like that. Sweet. All right. Uh, have we covered everything? Well, I put this back into like face mode. Yeah, let's go back into face mode. <laughs> So that's really cool. Uh, Gitty is a, a really cool project. Um, super simple to set up. I mean, literally pulling a binary down a Teladex machine and just, I mean, I could just have ran it straight away, but, you know, setting up a systemd unit file seemed like the nicer approach. And again, it took us a few seconds and everything just kind of worked. Um, I love that I can use SQLite. You know, I definitely would hook that up to Lightstream and start replicating that to GCS probably, uh, pulling it down to give me some sort of redundancy or resiliency. Um, just a really cool system. But great work. Like, uh, Thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, thousand plus uh, people have contributed to the project. So it's, uh, it's a real community effort and it takes a village. <laughs> well, how about uh, like say people watch this and they think, oh, I'd love to get involved. Like what, what's the best avenue for them to reach out, to start discussions and to start writing code if they want? Yeah, uh, so uh, in terms of uh, reaching out, we have our various chat channels, Discord and Matrix are bridged together. Um, in, and you can come into the develop channel saying, hey, I want to get started. And there are a ton of people uh, who are very happy to help there. That's uh, several of our core maintainers uh, started out that way with no Go experience. And now they write Go every day. Um, and we also have uh, a bunch of uh, issues labeled good first issue of improving the docs or uh, uh, things to get uh, your feet wet with experiencing the code base. Um, and we also uh, participate in Hacktoberfest every year, uh, run events. I've uh, Last year I uh, live streamed uh, over twitch.tv. As you mentioned, links will be down below. Um, and this year I'm actually, uh, going to try to do some, uh, really interesting projects. Uh, so we saw one instance of Gitty running on Equinix Metal, uh, but I'm going to try something. How many instances of Gitty can we run on a single <laughs> server? Um, uh, because, uh, our RAM resources are extremely low. So let's pop open one of those. Uh, super beefy ones from Mechanex, and how many can we run? I did a, a stream on Wednesday, and uh, I used a, a, 
you know, it's the big machine we're using today, but it's, it's the modest one on Equinix Metal. And they have these new machines called the AC. And it had a, a terabyte of RAM and 128 cores, I think it was. And it's like, I wonder if you, uh, like, if you're going to do that test, you should get one of those and uh, see how many GTs you can run on that thing. Because I would imagine it is a hell of a lot, especially with that RAM footprint as well. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any last words before we, we finish up today? Uh, no, I just thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, everyone in chat, for joining us on this journey. And um, yeah, uh, please uh, reach out uh, if you want to get involved or if you want to set up your own instance and you have any questions. Um, if you want to go uh, above and beyond what we did today, set up a package registry, uh, you can hook it into um, S3 if you want to store your packages up there, your Docker containers, your Ruby gems. If you want to enable code search, um, hook into Elasticsearch. Um, and you mentioned uh, authentication with uh, or verification with uh, cosign. Uh, but we also um, can hook into uh, things such as a uh, small step for being able to authenticate with an SSH principle and it's similar concept. And so I'm going to be working on blog posts for all these more advanced topics. So follow us on our blog. Yeah. And all of our links are down below. <laughs> yes, I will make sure all the links are there shortly after we finish up here today. Um, uh, and also, I didn't. I did click on the package thing as well where we were chatting and I forgot to actually talk about it, but you submit it's an OCI compatible uh, store as well. Do you do NPM, PyPy, stuff like that? Exactly. All of that. Yeah. Um, nice. Any, uh, we just, uh, that was released in 117 and in 118, we're still adding even more like uh, Vagrant uh, packages. Uh, Vagrant oh. boxes oh. was just added. Wow. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, very, very cool project. Lots of links will be in the show notes and we will see you all again next time. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Watching Warcode Live.